Hey everyone. Today we're talking diversity in decision making and it's going to be a bit of a theme for the next three or four weeks is this idea of diversity and what does that mean? What does that look like? How do we work with this concept within our organisations? So um, I wanted to get into why like why diversity, why is it important? What, is, what do we actually mean when we say that? Because I think certainly since I did my board of directors course seven or eight years ago now and we went through this whole module on diversity and decision making I think that term's changed quite a bit over the over that sort of decade or so and uh, I think it's worth revisiting so what do we mean by diversity why is it important well put simply diversity is bringing together a group of people who are different to yourself <laughs> straight up and it's super important because it leads to better decision making we know this the science the research shows this um, and part of that is because you simply have more information on the table if you have a bunch of people coming from different perspectives, they're open to different information sources, they're going to see things differently, they're going to see the world differently uh, to the way you do, and that simply means that you have a broader information source, you have a greater context in which you're able to make decisions. So, number one, it's super important because you simply have more information available for your decision making. And this is part of how it leads to better decisions and better outcomes for our businesses, right? Different possible, uh, different perspectives open up possibilities for healthy and positive conflict because you've got that clash of ideas going on. And working through that conflict means that you're going to look at the facts, you're going to dive into detail, um, you're going to have more in-depth discussions to resolve those conflicts and resolve those tension points and get to a place of common understanding um, or collaboration. Uh, we may not always agree. So that deepening of the conversation and the, the bringing of different perspectives is part of what, um, part of what aids the decision making. Uh, it means that you're better able to wrestle with risk as well because you're able to see things from different angles. You simply have more eyes available looking in uh, a bunch more directions. That whole conversation about strategic risk assessment and what do we actually do, how do we respond to this situation um, or this potential threat or this potential opportunity you have more eyes on the ground, you have different perspectives, that's going to help you to come to better decisions on how you manage that. And so it leads to greater innovation as well. Um, McKinsey have got a bunch of data around the financial performance improvements that come as a result of teams with greater ethnic and gender diversity. So straight up, it's important. We know it's important. What does it mean? What does it look like? Well, we have a lot of conversation about binary gender diversity in boardrooms. Um, you know, there's a lot of conversation about men versus women and the percentage, of, you know, what those balances look like. Uh, and there's a lot of conversation about ethnic diversity as well. But there's also other areas that we can look at, right? So a um, little hint for an upcoming topic of conversation. Um, there's, there's a whole bunch of different areas that might mean that somebody has come from a different or um, less privileged or, um, you know, just a different upbringing to our own and we need to actively look for that so it could be um, you know people that are born into a situation where they had less access to the financial resources that some of the other people on our board or team have done um, it could be to do with education you know I think if anything over the last uh, few years the internet revolution has shown us that people do not need degrees to be successful more than ever. Um, but you know, sometimes it might be about access to education. Um, it might be about coming from a different country and the cultures that sit behind that, as well as ethnic diversity. There's a whole bunch of different areas um, that we need to think about when we think, what does it look like to be diverse? So what does it look like to have a board or a team that is built up from um, a group of people that are different to myself? And the other really really cool thing that happens is that when you have this diversity and you have this ability to respond it's going to make you more resilient so it plays right into that perspective around how do we keep building resilience at an organizational level at a team level um, and when you get stuck you've got somebody that you can turn to who has a far different view of the world and can maybe help you get unstuck so super super important and um, I wanted to share a really simple exercise that I learned that will help you with this, um, particularly if you maybe have a group of people that is less diverse than um, you aspire to have. Uh, so this little exercise was super simple. I think it actually came from Patrick Lencioni and um, the Five Dysfunctions work at some point, but it was this idea of leaving a chair available at a meeting that's empty to represent the person that's not there. 
And so the question to you from um, your homework for this, for this little uh, snippet is to have a think about who's missing in the room, whose voice is not present, whose voice is not present and needs to be. Uh, you know, I know a lot of companies that will use this technique and, and place that empty chair to represent their customer who may not be in the room, and that's totally valid. Um, but equally, we can use it for maybe some of the more marginalized populations that may not be present in our room or in our work environment. Um, and I would encourage you to leave that chair empty and to make sure that you label that chair so that you check in with that chair regularly throughout your meeting. Um, we've talked about nothing about us without us, but even that simple act of raising the question, um, you know, knowing that we have a voice in the in the room that, that's not in the room, sorry, a voice that's not present that needs to be, um, how do we go back and check in with that? Acknowledging that. Check in with, you know, what could we add to the conversation from this community, from this perspective that might help in not necessarily getting a better result straight away, but just help in that positive, challenging um, conflict environment. So healthy conflict, right? That's what we're, what's, what we're looking for, really. Um, so that's it for me today. Diversity in decision making. We're starting with a super safe conversation, um, something that we're all familiar with. We know it's important. We know that it leads to better results in terms of innovation and financial performance. Um, and we know that it leads to greater resiliency. And personally, I find it a way more fruitful environment to work in when I have a whole bunch of amazing, unique, wonderful humans around me. Um, and I get to know them on a more personal level. And I get to see all of that beauty um, and all of that flourishingness um, that comes with a group of really diverse humans. So your homework exercise is to use that chair example, the empty chair. Um, try it out in the meeting. See how it goes. Let me know. Drop me a comment. That would be awesome. And I hope wherever you are in the world today, you're having an awesome, awesome day. I'll see you again real soon.